Welcome back. In this video, we'll write a code for a servlet. So, as we see in the last video, we have talked about the theory of servlet. In this video, we'll just go beyond that. We'll write a code in which I will demonstrate the, the way your, your servlet executes. To demonstrate that, I will write a code just to count the, no, the count the number of visit a user visit to that page, which means I will write a servlet which will count the visit you know the number of visits uh, the client is coming to that web that web page so for that i what i will do is i will create a new web page so we'll say a new servlet because i want to count so i have to make a dynamic page and i will name this servlet as a uh, counter or we'll say visit counter okay and so click on next now uh, there's something called as web.xml file so what is the web.xml file so this file is your deployment descriptor. So any servlet which you add on your web page or on your website or your web app, that entry should be there in web.xml. Example, if let's say if client sends a request, okay, if client sends a request to your website, so it will first go to web.xml file just to find the page okay, or the servlet. So I will click on finish. Again, I will we'll go through the web.xml file once again and let's click on finish so once you click on finish you will be getting a servlet a well prepared servlet what we'll do is first let's have a look at this web.xml file so whenever a client requests for a visit counter name or a pattern or a url it will call this page which is visit, uh, visitor count, visit counter okay which is this servlet in this servlet i'm getting lots of code what we'll do is we'll select all and say delete we'll write a code code from scratch okay in order to create a servlet as we have seen in the last video or last last video which is in second tutorial we have to create a class and we'll name this class as visit counter you have to make sure your class is public now since we want to make it as servlet we have to write extends http servlet oh, not server it is servlet Let's fix the import. So Control Shift I, which will fix all the imports. And then now, uh, whenever you work with servlet, basically a servlet works with three different methods. The first method is init. The second method is service, and the third method is uh, destroy. Now we have already seen the second video. Instead of working with service, we can work with either do gate or do post. But just to make it simple, we'll this time we'll go for service method. So let's say. Uh, I have, I have a method which is public void service. I don't want to use in it, so we'll go directly go for HTTP uh, sorry service method, which which has two parameter. One is HTTP servlet request. We'll name the object as request, and then we have one more which is HTTP servlet uh, response, and we'll say this is response object. Now once you've got these two objects, what I will do is I will declare a variable int i which will maintain the counter. Initially the value of i will be 0 and then uh, I will print, we'll say out.println will say the value, I want to print the value of i. But unfortunately we don't have an object of out, so for that I have to create object of print writer which, which helps me to print on the client page. I will say print writer out response dot get writer so get writer is responsible to give you object of print writer for this we need to fix the import so we'll say control shift i just to fix the import and it might throw an error so this get writer is a catch it will throw a exception it might throw an exception so we have to handle this exception so what we'll do is we'll just use throw and we'll throw io exception cool and that's it that's what we want to do right and now if you run this file, it, since we are, I'm running this file for the first time, it will take some time because this app is not deployed on Tomcat. So it will go in two steps. It will deploy the app on Tom Tomcat and then it will run. So let me run this file. Okay, you can see if I go to the console, if I see the window, it says the app is getting deployed on Tomcat server. So that's my Tomcat server. Either you can use Tomcat or you can use Glassfish because if you work with NetBeans, you get glassfish by default okay so i'm using tomcat and here we go the number of counts it says is zero okay that's weird okay so this is my first visit right but still 
Okay, the count is zero. If I say refresh, again the count is zero. We wanted to increase the count, right, from zero to one. Now what's happening here is every time you request for a page, okay, every time you request for a page, it will call a method called a service. So first time when you request for a page, it will call this method service. It will go here, it will declare variable i as zero and that's the problem, that's where we are getting the problem as the initial value was zero. So we are, if you want to make it one, if you just make it one and if you say refresh, so you can see the count is one. But again if you refresh, this is your sec third, second visit, third visit and if I, even if I say enter, every time I run this, it shows as the visit as one. It's because we every time you refresh a page, it will call service method which simply means it will declare a new variable every time it will declare a new variable i <coughs> and the value of i will be 1 and then it will create object of print writer that doesn't uh, matter and then it will print the value of i which is 1 so every time you run this it will give you a value 1 what we want now when you visit for the first time it, will sh it should give the value as 1 but next time it should give the value, value as 2 so what we can do is or the, for that what we what will do is every time I will say i plus plus. So if for the, after my first visit, it will go for i plus plus and it will print second, right? That's what we're expecting here. And again, if I say refresh, it says one. Because the problem is every time you call this page, it says it will declare a new variable. How about if I write this variable outside? Cool. Uh, yeah. If I write this outside, so what happens now is if I just save and if I say refresh, so for, for the first time it says one. Refresh, it says 2. Refresh, it says 3. Right? So if it's not visible for you, let me just again refresh. So every time I refresh this page or if I just enter this page, it will increase the count. Okay? Why it's happening is because we are declaring that variable outside. So this section here, which is outside a service method, is called as a section which is called as declaration section. So the declaration section. Now, why is for declaration? Because it is a section where you declare variables and objects. Now, why this? What is important is because when you learn JSP in future, so there will be a term called as declaration scope. So declaration tag. Okay, so we have to use declaration there also. So this this part here called declaration. Cool. Now let's say I don't want to de define this variable here. The initial value will be let's say zero. But for the first time when I come here, what I want is I just want to say public void init so we so, so that supports one more method which is called as init and i will initialize the value as one okay now what happens is if i refresh okay so you can see when i refresh this page it's again one is because the initial value was zero as soon as you run this application for the first time after deployment let me save it again if i deploy it oh it's not deployed okay, let me just run this file again Okay, and if I run this, so you can see the answer is 1, right? Even if you define the value as 0 here, first it will call a method which is init, which will assign a value 1 to the i, and then it will jump to service. Okay, because since, since you are running for the first time, it will go to init and then service. In service, I am printing the value and saying i++. What happens if I refresh? If I refresh the page, since the servlet is already there in the container, it will not call this init method once again. It will directly jump to service method in which the value of i is still 2. Okay, it will not reinitialize the variable because we are not going for init. So if we refresh, so you can see the count is increasing. Okay, so point to remember when your servlet goes to the container for the first time, it will call init and then it will call service. But if your servlet is there in the container, it will directly call a method service, not in it. Cool. And that's it from this video. In the next part, we'll talk about more advanced topic like system management and cookies. So do do subscribe and if you like this video, do thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.